Good morning. And welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Church here in Pasadena. Welcome to all members, friends, and guests. My name is James Coombs. My pronouns are he, him. I am a six foot four, I'm a tall black male, limited hair, and a, and a, and a, trans, a trans pride protect trans kids t UU t-shirt. And it is my honor to serve as a member of your board of trustees. Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territories of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of this land, oops, excuse me, the traditional caretakers of the lands and waters of this campus. With respect to the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories and commit to decolonizing our own practices and ways of being with each other to learning new ways of being in community, in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhart, with music by music director. Yes, please. <laughs> with music by uh, our music director, Dr. Zaneda Robles. <laughs> Assistant Director Wells Lang, and our very own Neighborhood Church Choir. And now, please, please, please take a moment to silence your phones. Families with young children are welcome in the sanctuary and the narthex. The family service has been on hiatus for the summer and will return very soon. And I have two announcements for us today. Right after today's service, please join us for our welcome home potluck. And secondly, and this is really exciting, uh, note that upcoming is our 40th Esperanza house building trip to Tijuana, Mexico, October 20th through 22nd, 40th trip. For over 20 years, our church has sent intergenerational groups of 20 to 30 participants twice a year to work with Esperanza International and Esperanza families as part of a holistic effort to strengthen communities and build dignified housing in underserved neighborhoods across Metro Tijuana. Please, join our, please consider joining the trip this fall. No construction experience is required, just a willingness to devote a weekend to learn about and engage in Esperanza's cross-cultural approach to building strong and sustainable communities with construction of safe housing as a fundamental pillar. For more information and details on the upcoming trip, please see this week's e-newsletter. Our order of service and many more announcements are available as a link in the Sunday email, posted in the narthex, or through the QR code on the back of your hymnal. You can always get more information on these and many other activities at the welcome table. And again, welcome to Neighborhood Church, whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey. Welcome to this inclusive faith community connected by love, spirit, and service.
We gather as many drops, each winding our own path down life's surfaces and ruts. Here, we pool together as a single body flowing together for a time. The words from the Reverend Leslie Takahashi remind us that together we are a stream at times even a river, for with our shared force we can travel towards oceans of meaning and seas of compassion. Many streams, one river flowing to the sea. Come, let us worship together on this In Gathering Sunday. Our opening hymn is number 122 in your gray hymnal or on the screens above. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing Sound Over All Waters, number 122.
Good morning. I'm Matt Vasco, Neighborhood's Director of Spiritual Exploration. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, Family Chapel will be returning next Sunday, and all of our children and youth spiritual exploration classes will start next Sunday as well. Family Chapel is designed for families that want to stay together for worship. <laughs> Um, it's especially great for families with young children and uh, preschool, first grade, second grade. Those are all great ages for that, uh, that experience. And all of our classes and youth groups meet during second service uh, at 1130. So just a quick reminder that we go back to two services next Sunday, 930 and 1130. Also, um, you may remember last year, uh, or was it two years ago now, Reverend Teresa invited us all to paint a rock as we came back out of COVID uh, to gathering in person again um, that we had on display right behind the sanctuary here for about a year. So I guess it was two years ago we painted them now. Um, and they've since been moved over by Ross Chapel um, but now that they have a larger space, it looks a little sparse. So we invite everyone to please stop by the spiritual exploration table today after service and paint a rock to add to our rock garden. Thank you. Can I have all of the children and youth forward for a story for all ages, please? Today's book is All the Water in the World by George Ella Lyon and Catherine Tullitson. Hi, welcome. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, lots of familiar faces. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, Colette. So it's so good to see you all. It's good to be coming back after a summer of travel. Hopefully, you know, maybe some traveling and some fun. Um, there's always lots to do even here in L.A. County. So today is our water communion. It's where we gather all of our waters, whether, whether they be from somewhere we traveled or uh, somewhere like home. Um, and we gather all of our waters together in symbolism of us all returning together after a summer apart. So it's a symbolic thing that we do. So I thought a perfect book for today would be All the Water in the World. That's something to imagine, right? All the water in the world is all the water in the world. Think about that. All. Chippy, right? Water flows from the hose. It wobbles in blue pools. It fills your cup up. That's fun to say, cup up. But where does it come from? Water doesn't come. It goes around. That rain that cascaded from clouds and meandered down mountains, that wandered over waterfalls, then slipped into rivers and opened into oceans. That rain has been here before. Thirsty air licks it from lakes, sips it from ponds, guzzles it from oceans. And this wet air swirls up till it's crowded into clouds where it hangs hotly around till cool air bumps through and honey those clouds just let it go and rain 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 tap dance 
avalanche, stampede of drips and drops and drumming, a wealth of water. But far away, it's a different day. No sound but wind, empty cup again, dry grasses rustle, dirt's just dust. Everything waits for an open gate in a wall of clouds for rain sweet and loud to fill the well and start the stream. Honey, living things dream of water for all to drink, to use in the sink or tub, to wash in, splash in. This wet wonder means grow, means life will flow through tigers, through trees. Do you see the tiger in the trees? It's an optical illusion. Through you and through me, all, all, all together now, all, all, all so precious, do not waste it, and delicious, we can taste it. Keep it clear, keep it clean. Keep earth green. The end. Okay, we're all in service today, so please go back with your parents or caring adults and onward. Giving is a spiritual practice through which we put our values into action. Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% of its contributions to a local social justice organization or activity. In addition to the plate, online giving is available using the QR code on the donations box just outside the sanctuary or using the text instruction shown up on the screen right now. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contribute to church operations, please make a note on the subject line or use an envelope available at the donation box. And this week, our gifts go to Coffee with a Cause. Here to tell us more is Trinity Casey. Trinity? Hello, good morning. <laughs> Hi, my name is Trinity Casey. I'm with Coffee with a Cause. Um, I've been working with Coffee with a Cause for about two years now. Um, I started, um, times were tough, you know, with COVID. Everybody had a tough time, especially me. Um, I had just graduated high school and I was looking for my next step in life. Um, I had just moved to Pasadena um, by myself, and I was alone. I didn't know what I wanted to do next, um, but I did have an opportunity. Coffee with a Cause had a spot open for an internship, and I had always wanted to work with coffee. Um, my dad, he's a Vietnam vet, and every morning he would wake up at four o'clock in the morning and make his fresh batch of coffee, and he would wake me up and say, Trinity, stay up with me, make, drink coffee with me. And so coffee has just always been a part of my life. And I wanted to help others and I wanted to serve coffee to people. So I took the job and Coffee with a Cause taught me everything that I know now. I know how to make a latte, I know how to make a macchiato, and I know how to make people smile every morning. <laughs> so, after my internship was over, I was kind of sad because I loved Coffee with a Cause. Coffee with a Cause, they teach me soft skills that I didn't know that I needed, how to talk to somebody that's not happy with their coffee. <laughs> 
how to wake up every morning <laughs> and not be tired. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to stay and I knew that I wanted to serve. And Dan, he opened a spot for me. And so now I get to intern other people that have come behind me. I get to teach them how to work with a POS system, how to make other people smile just like they taught me. And I get to do stuff like this where I get to speak to you all. Coffee with a cause. They connect to other students who are struggling like I was. They help people who are in tough situations and they teach them to grow. And I'm thankful and I'm happy to be here with you today to be able to talk about it. And I appreciate you all. Thank you. Will today's volunteers please come forward? And thank you for giving generously. Today's offertory anthem is a participatory, participatory experience. I'm going to teach you the song I wrote called Ujima. Ujima is the third principle of Kwanzaa, and Kwanzaa principles are applicable and useful all year round. This principle means collective work and responsibility, and if, not, if that's not what we're here for, then what are we here for? Collective work and responsibility. We're going to sing this into being today, so right from your seats with a posture that is conducive for open, warm, full-bodied singing, we're going to sing Ujima, and we have our friend Simon to help us on percussion today. We're so y'all welcome Simon because he's actually really amazing. Come on down. Simon's a singer too. He just does everything. Jesus. 
I am the Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhart, your minister. I am, <laughs> I am a white woman quickly approaching the end of my fourth decade with silver strands in my hair. Today I wear my favorite gold hoops in my ears and my nose. I'm wearing a white celebratory robe and a stole that depicts the sunset and beaches of Southern California. It rained this morning. And when I heard those first drops, I thought no better day than on in gathering Sunday when we will celebrate water communion. Today we gather here, we pool together in this time and place to honor this growing community, our individual histories and paths the way we form one body when we are gathered, and how we aspire towards a future that is nourishing, life-giving, and spiritually empowering. This is a community of many who have found friendship and mutual support in faith for years, maybe decades, and this space is yours too for those who gather with us, maybe even for the first time today. Today, for this time and place, we are one. In a few moments, we will celebrate a Unitarian Universalist ritual that symbolizes how we come together as individuals and form one body for a time we will celebrate water communion. This ritual began in 1980 and is still practiced in many of our Unitarian, Universalist, and Unitarian, and Universalist congregations and fellowships and gatherings on this same morning. Many of our siblings all across the lands have participated or are currently participating in this same ritual today, and I find that beautiful, beautiful. Many streams, one river flowing to the sea. Lucille, Chuck, Longview, and Carolyn McDade, the creators of the first water communion, contextualize the ritual this way. These are their words. The water ceremony became the central part of a religious service that broke with tradition in significant ways. It was created by women, women who had long been silent in the pews. The ritual space was also made sacred by the women themselves. We gathered to worship in a way that was authentic and liberating to us, not in a church, but in a semicircle around a large common earthenware bowl. It was a ritual of women being connected by a universal symbol, water, a ritual of women being connected to the totality of life. Making our way like rivers from places distant and near, we come together to give shape to a new spirituality. For there is no theology that calls women to strength rather than to support the strength of others, that calls women to action rather than to passivity, that calls women to full expression rather than to meek acceptance. Recognizing that, we see we must question every box, every definition, every assignment from an authority outside our own beings so that we can create and recreate for ourselves the rituals and symbols that give meaning to us. So we come together to question, to hear, to share, to speak, to inspire, and to celebrate through new rituals, knowing that our energy and our love are transforming. Celebrating now our connectedness, we choose water as our symbol of our empowerment, as rivers in cycle release their waters and regain new beginnings. So do we cycle 
For these, as women, be these beginnings are powerful but not easy. But still we come to create and celebrate and to live by the only spirituality worthy of our devotion, a spirituality that uplifts, empowers, and connects. Closing their words. So here, in the early fall of 2023, over 40 years since that first water ritual, we celebrate the water communion as a ritual of gathering of everyone, where individual voices are important, transcendent, everlasting, and nourishing like the rain. We celebrate the women who created it, and today we celebrate every body who participates with us. I invite you into a moment of reflection and silence following these words. Spirit of life and love, God, goddess, God X of many and no single name. Help us find in this community here a community of nourishment and help us create in this community a space of nourishment for others. Keep present in our hearts and in our minds what it means to be welcoming, to be kind, to be loving of heart as we navigate these new oceans together. Blessed be, bendita sea, amen.
got some goosebumps. <laughs> I was trying not to sing too loud so the microphone <laughs> didn't pick up my voice. Mm -hmm. During the musical interlude in a few moments, you are invited to join us in the water ritual. First, if you brought water, I'd like you to take it out now. And if you didn't, that's OK. If you didn't bring water, there are some located in small vessels around the large receptacles. There's also some on the table in the narthex. You're welcome to get one of those. You're also welcome to participate by sitting silently. As you gather your water out, I invite you to place your hands on it. And I know that some of you are here in family groups today or groups with friends. Perhaps you'd all like to place your hands on the water you brought. Once you have it out, I will invite you to say with me while your hands rest on it, this water is sacred. And I have my water that came from a bottle in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> I invite you to say with me while holding your water, this water is sacred. During the music, you are invited to come up to one of the altars. There are two in the front and one in the narthex. As you approach, pour some water into the large receptacle. You can also choose one of the smaller ones around the side. And then make your way back to your seat, taking care to make space for those who come up and taking care with some items that are around the front. Thank you, Mimi. At the end of our water service today, the three receptacles will be gathered together and the water will be poured into our lovely gardens outside, except for a small amount, which I will sanitize and bottle, and we'll use it next year in that water communion. <coughs> Thank you, Mary. At this moment, I invite you to rise and body our spirit, to join us in the front. If you would like assistance, raise your hand and we will come to you. Let us, at this point, bring our waters to the altars.
Join me in a blessing based on the words of my colleague, Ron Wahamani. This water is sacred. May it continue to flow through this community with shining reflections of the unique gifts that flow through each of our members. Please repeat after me, this water is sacred. May it continue to nurture this community with sustaining hope that we journey together through ripples of growth and change. This May it continue to bless this community with loving reminders of our collective responsibility to one another and the world. This water is sacred. May its ripples be a reminder that the changes and growth within this community bring movement and transformation to the world beyond our doors. This water is sacred. In moments when the reservoirs of hearts and spirits are drained by sorrow or pain, may it nourish them with the knowledge that we are surrounded by a deep and abundant love. This water is sacred. Blessings to you on this in gathering Sunday. Our closing hymn is number 1064 in your teal hymnals or on the screens above you. Please rise in body or in spirit. Get ready to sing your favorite hymn, Blue Boat Home. This water is sacred. 
May the vessels of our love always be abundantly full and overflowing. May we nourish others like the rain that falls on the parched earth. May we go forth with our shared force, travel towards oceans of meaning and seas of connection. May it be so.